This is Ryan McPartland. You're watching Chuck versus the podcast. Hi, my name is Graham Jones, but you can call me Gray. This is my show. It's about Chuck. It's filled with interviews, the latest news, crazy co-hosts, and spoilers that'll make your day. Oh, wait, wait, I need to go back. I host these TV nights. They used to be pretty boring, but everything changed when I found NBC's new show, Chuck. Pretty soon, my TV night got pretty crowded. Guys I didn't even know were showing up the door. Big important guys. Really scary, nasty, get killed for hosting them guys. Next thing I know, these super episodes are downloaded into my brain. Which means every moment of my life, I'm thinking about Chuck. ChuckTV.net sent their top people to protect me. That's Mel and Liz. They're pretty zany. They co-host with me now as a cover. So now I must welcome you to Chuck vs. The Podcast. The number one TV podcast for NBC's Chuck. This is Gray. This is Mel. This is Liz. And we want to welcome you to Chuck vs. The Podcast, episode 40, for Monday, February 8th, 2010. We're back with another exclusive interview that I had with Captain Awesome himself, Ryan McPartland. But first, the news. In ratings news, Chuck is holding steady. The viewership for episode 306, Chuck vs. The Nacho Sampler, pulled in 6.72 million and had a 2.4 in the 18 to 49 demo, which is slightly lower than it was with uh, episode 305, but still pretty steady, especially when you consider that all of the shows that Chuck is up against were brand new that night. There were no reruns for, I think, the first time since Chuck's come back. There mm -hmm. weren't any reruns. It was up against its regular competition, and it held pretty steadily. So I'm impressed. Yeah. yeah. It's looking good. Great. Chuck's composer, Tim Jones, was interviewed by a class full of fifth graders, taught by Chuck fan Al, who wrote a nice report along with the kids' questions and Tim's answers. Um, it was a lot of fun to read. This was this totally gave me a kick. You could find it on ChuckTV.net. The article is, Tim Jones, are you smarter than a class full of fifth graders? Yeah, and <laughs> so. I, I appreciate Tim taking the time to do that. Um uh, he was really, really generous with his with his time and his answers, and it's a very fun article. They asked him some good questions, like, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> and do you like pie? I love that. Yeah. Do you like pie? Yeah. Uh, well, yes, Cartman, I do. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one of the other cast members um, has a bit of a news announcement here. Do you need a reason to visit San Diego? Do you live in San Diego and need a reason to visit the amazing Signet Theater of Old Town? Mark Christopher Lawrence is starring in August Wilson's play The Piano Lesson at the Signet Theater of San Diego through the end of February. It's a performance Mark calls the most demanding role of my career. Uh, the opening night is already sold out and tickets are going fast. So if you want to get more information, you can go to the signettheater.com website. That's C-Y-G-N-E-T theater.com. And uh, they're spelling it T-R-E. I know some people spell theater... T E R. Um, so uh, and you can get the uh, details also on chucktv.net. That's right. We've got a new segment on chucktv.net called the Friday Five. And it's a, just a little column that I decided to start that's answering some of the fan questions that come our way during the week. Um, some weeks I'll throw in some spoilers maybe. Um, we'll just have some general end of the week fun. So be sure to stop by on Fridays for the Friday Five. Very cool. And speaking of blogs, Fahim Anwar, who played Manoush in Czech versus the Nacho Sampler, has his own blog. You can find it at fahimanwar.com. It's F-A-H-I-M-A-N-W-A-R, Fahim Anwar. And he has a really interesting blog up there about his experience filming Czech, which was, we discovered, his first uh, TV show. Mm -hmm. he's, he's an aerospace engineer by day and a stand-up comedian by night. And uh, I guess on a on kind of a whim decided to try out for the role of Manoush and got it and did a bang up job. You'd never think that was his first time on screen. Mm -hmm. Really impressed. And you can read more about it again on his blog, FahimAnwar.com. Mm -hmm. You know, that reminds me about uh, the guy who plays Hero on Heroes. Um, yeah. Is, is somebody who was a total tech guy. He, he was doing animation um, and and then decided to try out for TV and obviously <laughs> <laughs> worked out well for him worked didn't it? Out really well <laughs> yeah yeah the trailer for avon's new film i love you too has been released 
this is one of the projects that she worked on in Australia after Chuck's second season wrapped. You remember that, um, you know, she, was, she wasn't able to participate in the Rally Cry episode last April, but, but she did make a point to get in touch and add her thanks to the fans in the next podcast. Um, that was episode 21. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The film is due for release in Australia in May, but no word yet on U.S. release date. Darn. Mm. Visit ChuckTV.net to view the trailer. Mm-hmm. Man, and it's a romantic comedy, right? right. Yeah. Uh huh. I love those. I was excited when I saw the trailer because Bridie Carter is in. Uh, she's got a supporting role, and I loved her. In she played Tess in. Uh, it's a long-running Australian TV series called McLeod's Daughters. I had eight seasons with over 200 episodes it was i don't know if i would have started watching it if i had known just how long it was going to run but uh, she was one of my favorite characters on there and she's the other blonde that you'll see in the trailer with yvonne so i'm i'm doubly excited about this one cannot wait to find out when it's coming to the u.s Mm -hmm. fingers crossed and you know speaking of yvonne that reminds me that uh that yvonne was actually our very first interview. She was. On our very first podcast. Mel had an interview with Yvonne uh, two years ago, and we're very excited to celebrate uh, just last week our two-year anniversary on the podcast. It was uh, January 23rd, 2008 that we released the first one. And, uh, well, it's hard to, hard to believe it's two years later and 40 episodes later. Woo! And now we're coming to you live and in color. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty soon we'll be in 3D. No, 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 <laughs> no, no he no, wants no. to see that. Yeah. Oh boy! Yeah, but uh, um, to accommodate the new video podcasts, I'm really excited to uh, announce something that you may have seen on the website, and that's that we're now live on Blip TV. Um, a lot of people have been having connection issues with the website, which I'm still trying to figure out. Um, but in the meantime, you can go to Blip TV, and we have a feed of, of the podcast there. You can view the podcast on Blip TV, and there's a lot of new enhancements that are really, really cool. Um, one thing that we love is that it saves us bandwidth. We actually don't have to pay for the bandwidth there. So anytime that you view it on Blip TV, we don't have to pay for it, which is really cool. Um, and also, uh, some other enhancements are that there's a new iTunes feed. So if you go to iTunes and look for Chuck versus the podcast, you'll now see three versions. One of them says MP3, one of them says AAC, and the other one is just Chuck versus the podcast. The one that doesn't say anything after it, that's the one that comes from Blip TV and that we don't pay for the the hosting for. So if you uh, if you have a chance to unsubscribe from the previous one and subscribe to the new one, that saves us a bit of cash. We like that. Yeah, we like that. Some other enhancements that are really cool is that you can actually now embed this podcast on your own blog or website. Just like you may have seen the latest episode on ChuckTV.net, um, websites can now embed the podcast wherever you want. Uh, so that's very cool. And uh, as well, it allows us to have ads on the podcast, which are uh, pretty unobtrusive. They're, they're down near the bottom of the podcast. And we actually get a tiny little bit of revenue from every time that there's an ad displayed on your screen, and especially when you click the ads. So if you want to support the podcast, you can actually do it a lot more cheaply now. Um, costs you nothing except a couple of clicks. And uh, what may be confusing to you is, is after a minute or so, the ad will actually hide itself. And the reason they do that is so that you don't just leave it playing on your computer to try to generate revenue. They want to know that you're actually there watching it. So if you have a, if you see it shrink down and you're watching it, um, it's great if you would just click it again so that the ad comes back on and that lets them know that you're still watching it and still supporting the podcast. Um, and we're really, really hoping that this works well because then we'll rely a lot less on things like donations and merchandise and we don't have to talk about those things so much. Less shilling, more news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we're going to roll right on to the fan emails. And uh, the first one we have is Shannon from Colorado Springs, who wrote in with quite a few questions, actually. And we'll just tackle one this week. So, Dear Gray and Team Bartowski. Wow, Mel and Liz, you're your honorary wow. members of Team Bartowski. We, we made it. <laughs> yeah. We hit the big time. <laughs> yeah. 
But Shannon says, my husband and I are big fans. First, I'd like to say that I really enjoyed and appreciated the feedback and analysis in the last two podcasts. So much so that I've now downloaded all of the past episodes and plan to listen to them as soon as possible. I do have a few questions that I would like to pose. What really happened to Morgan and Anna? Is it over? Has she left the show? Will she ever come back? Will Morgan ever find love? Will Morgan ever get a life? <laughs> Will Big Mike marry Morgan's mom? Um, I really enjoyed listening to your show. I appreciate that the content does not include swearing, and we are very proud of that fact. Um, so I can listen when my son is around. Please keep up the good work. Sincerely, Shannon, Colorado Springs. So, uh, Shannon, thanks so much for your message. Uh, very complimentary, and we really do appreciate uh, your, your comments. And uh, Melton is, what do you think? About all those questions about Morgan. Mm, I don't know. Morgan, did he say he didn't? Did he really explain what happened? All he said was, all he said to Chuck was it didn't work or something. He said she ran off with another chef. Oh, okay. Yeah. And some very exciting breaking news came in this week after we recorded the podcast. And that's that Julia Ling has confirmed via her Twitter that she is indeed going to be back. As a matter of fact, she starts shooting next week for some uh, scenes that we're presuming will be in the last batch of episodes of season three. So really, really excited to announce that Julia Ling will be back as Anna Wu. I will say, though, that I during the um, Chuck versus the Nacho Sampler, when they were at Webcom, Webcon, mm -hmm. I kept expecting to see her turn up there. Even though I knew she wasn't <laughs> in the episode, yeah. I just kept thinking, oh, Anna's got to be here somewhere. Surely she's here somewhere. Yeah. As far as Morgan ever finding love, I don't know. I mean, he, he and Karina seemed to hit it off there at the yeah. end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, could, could be, could be. Uh, Morgan getting a life. Now, I think that would be the end of the show. Like, like if Chuck goes six <laughs> seasons at, at the, you know, the, the last episode, that would be the thing that Morgan finally gets a life. And then it's like, what other story is there that they could tell? You don't think he's starting to get a life now? I mean, he's assistant manager and he has been for several consecutive weeks. Um, yeah. You know, he had to fight to earn the, not earn, but take the respect of the by morons. Yeah, I mean, um, he's he's growing just like Chuck is growing. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't declare that he has a life yet. But yeah. like I said, he and Karina, I mean, that's a point in his favor. Mm -hmm. uh, assistant manager. Uh, yeah, he even had Casey on his side there. Yeah, acting as his his bodyguard. <laughs> yeah, his bodyguard yeah. slash lieutenant assistant manager. Now, will Big Mike marry Morgan's mom? Uh I don't know if I see that happening. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think Big Mike's ready to be pinned down. Yeah. I, I don't see that happening. So could be. Could, could be. be. Oh, and I forgot the P.S. P.S. Liz is pretty. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say. Hey, <laughs> you got the best part. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking a little bit before the podcast about that. Yeah, uh, that comment and some of our new listeners may not know where that comes from way back in the day when we first started this podcast we invited listeners to email with our questions or comments and liz little firecracker that she is ordered people not to email her unless it was to tell her that she was pretty so <laughs> that's where that comes from yeah it's kind of not interested in anything else <laughs> yeah took off like so wildfire yeah, it did. It really <laughs> did. We every comment that we got after that for the next like year said yeah. it's pretty, and then it, you know, then I was pretty, and then Gray was pretty, and yeah. uh, you know, it just kept going from there. So, yeah, good time. I graduated to Team Bartowski, but we're still pretty. Yeah, <laughs> I think Team Bartowski is very pretty. Yeah, honestly. very pretty. So I take that as a compliment. Cool. Our next email is from Trish. She's from Georgia, and she says, "Hi, I just want to say that I love the podcast, particularly for its professional feel." I just got done listening to episode 37 and was a bit dismayed to hear you all say that you weren't going to comment too much on the episodes as they are discussed in detail on the forums. While I'm an auditory person and love listening to podcasts when I'm working, put me in the column for the listeners who want more commentary and theory. Sincerely, Trish. Don't worry, Trish. That was kind of a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. That was the episode that Liz and I were 
holding down the fort by ourselves and Gray wasn't able to join us. So we were, and we had a backlog of information to get through. Mm -hmm. So um, we do intend to discuss the episodes uh, in subsequent podcasts, including this one, which yeah. we had to stop ourselves before we started recording. We had to stop talking about it. So we'd have something to talk about on the podcast. Yeah. Um, but that was, that was a one-time thing. So yeah. thanks and, for writing in and rest assured. Yeah. And it was partially a bandwidth issue, which we've resolved with the, the blip thing. That's true. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so we will be doing lots of talking. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Jordan says, hi guys, I was doing a 16 by 16 Punnett square, which for those who don't know is, and which is me. Uh, I have to fill in 256 small boxes each with eight specific but different letters and thought that I, don't, I still don't I still don't understand what that is. I think it's kind of anyway, like Sudoku. Uh, that's why I don't know, because I don't know Sudoku. Anyway, he says, I thought that if I had Chuck powers, I'd be done in no time. I was wondering if you guys have ever had a moment where you thought it'd be great to have Chuck's powers. And if so, what was the reason? Chuck's powers. For me, it was changing a flat tire. <laughs> I would like to be able to know different languages just by flashing. Mm -hmm. I work in the, the department that I work in at my university includes uh, languages. And so I'm surrounded by Chinese and, and German and Spanish and French and Arabic all day long. And I'm picking up bits and pieces, but it would be really cool to just be able to flash and have mm -hmm. all the information there. And then I could surprise everyone with yeah, I, but I wouldn't kick anybody. Yeah, I don't have a lot of need for martial arts at work. Yeah, unless they really <laughs> deserved it. But so far, yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now I think I probably just would like to, you know, have the knowledge and you know technical knowledge that Gray has. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. There you go. You know, yeah. then I wouldn't need powers. I'd be fine. <laughs> okay, if Liz is the one who looks best in this podcast, now you know why. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it for the news. <laughs> and and that's it for the and for the fan emails. So anyway, we're gonna get now to our interview with Ryan McPartland. Of I of course had this in my series that uh, I recorded back in September in LA, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. I want to welcome you, Ryan McPartland, to the podcast. Of course, you've been on a couple times before audio-wise, but this is your first time on video. How are you doing? I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. Well, how, how is it filming, Chuck? You're, you're up, I guess, season uh, season, season three, three, man. Episode five? Yeah, it? episode five or six. I think we're on six now, right? Six. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, we're on episode six. And you're a lot busier this year. I am busy this year. You know, we talked about this before where it's now that I know the secret the weight of Chuck's secret is on my shoulders now too so it's kind of a way to reinvent the show a little bit um, and at the same time keep the premise from this first season alive and let everybody still kind of uh, uh, go back and forth between the spy world and the home life and the buy more and and you know all comedy and action you know, ensues mm -hmm. now at the end of the second season your character was really uncomfortable dealing with the spy world with Ellie. Has that changed at all? Is it getting better? Yeah, I mean, I think that I get, I get a little more comfortable. Let's let's just say that I get um, an itch to go ahead and become a spy to get that real adventure in my life. I start pestering Chuck to let me into his world because now that I've done everything else and um, succeeded at it, let's just say, and been awesome at it. Uh, now the spy world is a whole new frontier for me to conquer. Mm -hmm. So when I get in there, you'll have to see whether I can hold up like, you know, like uh, Adam Baldwin, Agent Casey, or if I crumble like Chuck did in the first season, maybe somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and how does it feel to be not awesome at something? Well, I don't ever view myself. You know, they always say a villain never views himself as a villain, you know, that they always think that they're that they're a good guy working for what they're uh, what they're trying to achieve. I never really feel like I'm not awesome, to be honest. I always feel like there's a positive spin to put on any kind of breakdown. 
Like there's going to be some sort of silver lining to any breakdown that'll make me stronger and better and more awesome, if you will. What? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you're getting to do a lot more stunts. Are you doing your own stunts at all? Oh, I do all my own stunts. Me and Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Anything else? No, of <laughs> course. No, I don't do my stunts. I leave that to the pros. Mm -hmm. I, um, I almost blacked out. I did one little stunt and I saw stars for a few minutes and I felt like I was a real wuss now. So I hate to shatter anybody's view of me being that awesome, but uh, but I just played the character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now specifically, and, and this is going to actually air after episode four, please. Okay. So don't be afraid to. Oh, this will air after episode four. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So uh, it's a great episode for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now in episode three or four, Angie Harmon, uh, her character Sydney, is out to kill Awesome. So what did Awesome do to, to deserve this? Well, first of all, it's it's tough to look death in the face and have it be Angie Harmon's face because it's a, it's a very it's a conundrum, if you will, of all these. <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? Uh, so it's like um, it, uh, what I did to deserve it. I don't know. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I, I was over ambitious and trying to get in, into the spy world. And then once I am in the spy world, you can't really get out, you know? So I don't know. I guess I'm just going to have to deal with the likes of Angie Harmon's from now on. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, uh, so what would you say your favorite moments have been in the season so far? My favorite moments have been all of those with my dear wife, Sarah Lancaster. And um, no, I really have a good time with her and Josh uh, Gomez, who plays Morgan. And we're actually shooting a scene right now that we're having a lot of laughs in. At least I'm having a lot of laughs. I don't know if they are or not. Um, so <laughs> we're having fun. And those are the best to me. I mean, that's kind of what it, where it started. Even though the action world is very cool, it's tedious and it's a lot of work. And always when I come back home and I'm kind of in the family life with those guys, uh, there's a lot of comedy and that's what I like best. And I feel like I do best, so. That's awesome. And uh, last but not least, any upcoming projects we can promote for you? The <laughs> Uh, I don't know why I'm laughing. Um, the Lifetime movie I did up in Toronto, um, everything she ever wanted is coming up. Uh, but you'll have to talk to Jamie French. He's running this big campaign about it uh, and trying to work with Lifetime and NBC are working together. Uh, I think it's on in November sometime. I do a great Southern accent. I mean, it's very authentic. I researched it for a long time. I moved to South Carolina during the hiatus and decided to really um, to be a character actor for once. If you believe that, so <laughs> cool. Well, well, thanks so much for for joining us, and we we can't wait to see season three uh, when it comes in March. Thank you, sir. Good to meet you. And we're back. You know, it wasn't that long ago that we talked to him, uh, that we interviewed him for another podcast but mm -hmm. it's always so nice to hear from him he's so enthusiastic about his job and the show and yeah i just love hearing from him yeah, yeah. and my uh, my wife has caught only little bits of chuck and he's her favorite character <laughs> <laughs> is it because he's usually shirtless no no it, <laughs> she just finds uh, finds him really wholesome which is ironic, isn't it? Because yeah. he's usually shirtless. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like the most wholesome character on the show. Yeah. yeah but, you know, he's, if he's shirtless, it's for a reason. He's usually working out. Yeah. Yeah. So That's true. Cool. Well, that leads us to our discussion about Chuck 306, Chuck versus the Nacho Sampler. Yeah. So who, who didn't have nachos during this, this episode? I admit I didn't. I'm watching my salt these days. I didn't uh, because I needed to get in more, more vegetable servings. Yeah. Yet again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do want to mention that uh, that Chuck versus the Nacho Sampler was reviewed in a couple of places. Um, Alan Seppenwall posted a great review, and of course our own Lou uh, posted a great review at ChuckTV.net. And uh, we did also mention that uh, the actor Fahim Anwar, who played Manoush, blogged about his experience. So there's lots of great places that you can get more in depth about. Uh, about the episode, but um, I mean, there was great stuff, uh, especially, especially with Chuck. I mean, the the like it it was sad at the, at the end, but the the transition he went through in this episode um, really, really 
dug him deeper into the spy world. He got a real dose of what it's like to be a spy, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I mean, he thought he knew, but watching Casey and Sarah do it, it's a lot different than having to do it yourself. Yeah, and and particularly taking Manoush, who, Mm -hmm. I mean, they they even made a very direct reference that this is a guy just like him. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I think it was Lou that said, you know, just a couple of steps to the left, and this could have been Chuck's experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If he hadn't had Sarah in his corner... That would have been that would have been him, mm-hmm. right? So you know, you could see that this transition is not making Sarah happy at all. Mm-mm. She's yeah. she's hurting over this, and she's missing the Chuck. The references, the flashbacks to the very first episode where he meets her mm-hmm. when she first walks into the Bymore, and um, I liked how they did that. Just you know, I mean, not not that they were saying that the audience is too stupid to remember that, but putting him side by side almost Mm -hmm. her then her now him then him now it was painful i think i don't think that she's happy with this transition and i think she went through a period of mourning seems like she's mourning the chuck that she first met yeah i agree uh it i thought it was really effective how they did go to the flashbacks of of the Mm -hmm. that first episode Mm -hmm. especially that last one where they very cleverly flipped it so we saw that first scene from Sarah's point of view Mm -hmm. and of her saying piece of cake, which of course Chuck had done at the beginning of the episode yeah, in reference to Manoush. And, you know, we know now from our vantage point, two years later, two and a half years later, we, we know that it was not a piece of cake for Sarah. Yeah. Um, And so, and it was a struggle for Chuck as well. So it's parallels all over the place. They really like doing parallels, but mm-hmm. I think this is the first time that we've seen a Chuck and Sarah parallel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I thought yeah. was And I, I did get the sense in that first episode when she was watching him um, help that dad with his daughter, the ballerina. Mm-hmm. I think that was the moment that she got soft on him. Yeah. That was it right there. Yeah. yeah. She yeah. realized it wasn't going to be a piece of cake after all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She just fought it for the next couple of years, but mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. you know, I have to say this probably wasn't my very favorite episode this far, mm-hmm. um, but it was probably the funniest. And I don't know why, but every time Manoush got tranquilized, <laughs> oh my! Every goodness. time Casey brought out that gun, <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, but it hit a funny bone in me. And, I, the, and the crazy I, thing is, they've done that gag before, but for some reason, it was totally fresh this time. I think it was just Manoush. It was yeah. Is, Fahim, Anwar. Fahim Anwar. Yeah. I, I, I think it was him. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Hats off to him. I mean, for the, for this being his first TV role, he did an amazing job for a pretty major part. He yeah. did. He did. Yeah. He nailed it. He mm-hmm. really did, and uh, made me laugh. I just, I, heard, I laughed so hard at one point I couldn't breathe. <laughs> yeah. So how did Frankenstein hit you then? Yeah. Oh my God. Send you so over the was, edge. That, yep. Absolutely. Yes. I had to hit pause. <laughs> yeah. I just, I would have missed the whole next scene. <laughs> yeah. The, even, even Yvonne got to do some comedy. You remember when that smug moment where um, Casey admits that she was right there in the castle? Oh, right, and, right. You know, and she says, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's that, right. That uh-huh. hit my funny bone. Yeah. When I, I loved her um, frack off t-shirt. <laughs> yes. That was, which avail- is available at the NBC store, by the way. Oh, really? Yes, it's available on NBC.com. I think you may have to shrink it yourself <laughs> to get it to fit like that, but... Yeah. It is available at NBC.com. Yeah. Your store. But what did you guys think about the whole, I don't know, there was a, uh, my nieces, I'm not going to let them watch this. I'm sorry to say, I thought it was a good episode. I thought it moved the story along. It set us up for some really important things that are coming down the line. Um, but I, my nieces, they're 10, 8, and 7, and they're not going to see this one. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, uh, I Twittered about it, and, and I have to say, as much as, I loved certain parts of this episode. I I thought that, and even though I mean there there's been skin before, there's been innuendo before, there's been, um, I mean situations with Chuck and Sarah in bed and and mm-hmm. and things like that. But I I feel like when it's necessary for the story, mm-hmm. that it's okay. Um, but I did feel like that there was a lot of gratuitous innuendo. 
mm-hmm. in this episode. And and I thought, especially because they know that there are a lot of young Chuck fans, um, mm-hmm. I was a little bit surprised and, and, and taken back by, by the amount of it. I got the feeling that you're referring mostly to Jeff and Lester and what was going on at the Biomore, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, very, um, uh, very direct sexual. It almost wasn't innuendo. <laughs> yeah, mean, there was not much that you had to imagine to get where they were trying to to send you. I wondered though if that was because if it was supposed to be a sort of a juxtaposition, and we have this this sweet, um, you know, she looks innocent and very nice um girl hannah who's just come to the buy more and mm-hmm. anna is gone now so hannah oh that's gonna be fun yeah. is, <laughs> she's you know the the most attractive female who works there now mm-hmm. and i i wondered if it wasn't kind of a, a way to shortcut for us and for her as a character that this is a cesspit you know it's a cesspool of of male innuendo and and not even innuendo you know she's a pretty smart cookie she's not gonna she doesn't i think they could have done it a lot more subtly like i think we got that from the moment she walked in and those guys were staring at her yeah like like we it's been mentioned it was mentioned several times over the course of the episode and and we saw that she was uncomfortable i don't think we had to go there with all of the things that Mm -hmm. they said and uh and i think it was it was just it was a combination of how there was part that was central to the story with seducing Manoush sort of with the drankness and stuff. And then you also had the the buy more situations with Hannah. And mm-hmm. then in addition, there was a whole pile of skin at the end in the Dubai scenes, which Oh right. Mm-hmm. Which when you add all of that together, it it doesn't spell something that is gonna appeal to all ages anymore. That's true. It was one of the more suggestive uh, you know pg-13 episodes mm-hmm. so yeah i agree i was a little bit disappointed in that and i wish it hadn't been the case but because yeah. i'm gonna have a lot of explaining to do to get my nieces from five to seven mm. but i think it'll be okay but yeah. speaking of the seduction mission though mm-hmm. a lot of people were concerned i was seeing a lot of comments on on both the the main site and the forum people being concerned about chuck's reaction to Sarah seducing Manoush, which I never thought was going to be an issue. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of people were concerned about how he was going to react to that. And, you know, he exactly the way I expected. He It's a job. He didn't wasn't particularly thrilled about it. But even in the in the setup where they were in Sarah's bedroom, mm-hmm. but really in the castle, yeah, you know, and she gets up and comes out and she's putting a robe on over her skivvies and Chuck doesn't even give her a second glance. He's completely focused on the mission. Yeah, which I, I think we have to acknowledge that he has had spy training and he has had his first solo mission. He, he was, was compartmentalizing. Yeah. And I was impressed to see that. I think that's, uh, it's both good and bad. I mean, like Liz was saying earlier, Sarah's mourning the Chuck that she knew. Mm-hmm. And in a way, that's, I mean, that's part of the Chuck that she knew yeah. was the one who would have been jealous. Yeah. But on the other hand, it, it sure made it a lot easier to get through those scenes to not have to worry about Chuck and how yeah. he was feeling about it. You know, he which, was... which makes you wonder how they're going to unlock that. Cause you know, it, it can't go too much further because the Chuck and Sarah dynamic is very important to the show. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Now I, I do have to mention as well. Um, it, I think a big part of it for me was the fact that the Hannah character as it was set up was actually remarkably similar to Kristen Krug herself. Like when I was talking with her, she is a very intelligent, sophisticated, cultured person. Mm -hmm. Um, She even herself said, minus the IT part, this is very much like her. Um, But I, but I felt like at least in this episode, maybe they go further in the next episode and, and that may be the case, but I, I felt like for her to be set up as such a sophisticated, intelligent person, I just felt like, she would might have reacted differently in the in the buy more. I I felt like the way that they treated her, that uh, I don't know. What what did you think about that? I think it was a disservice to her character, quite frankly. I it, and I say this knowing where the character's going, and I think looking back, it's it's going to make more sense through the lens of of having her next um, appearances over. But at the same time, I just felt like it was kind of a missed opportunity. 
Yeah. To establish her because she, I don't know, it, she didn't quite strike the right note between demanding to know where Chuck is, mm -hmm. where Chuck's been. But at the same time, you, I got the feeling that she didn't want to be too pushy because it's yeah. not like they're dating or anything, except that she did just come thousands halfway, of miles yeah, halfway <laughs> around the world to work at the Biomore to yeah. be near Chuck. And then he's gone all the time. Yeah. And she's left with these um, foul mouthed losers. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. I wasn't really impressed with her storyline in this episode. Uh, yeah. I, I know we weren't really supposed to be focusing on her and it is a little bit of a setup for what's coming, but yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think we could have done without it. Did she lead Chuck on? Like, is she not as talented or sophisticated as, as that? I think she is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think she is. Um, I, I do think, however, that part of her purpose for being there in this episode was to alert Morgan to right. Chuck's activities because the, the guy's been clueless mm -hmm. for all this time. And yep. then Hannah let slip that he went to Paris which, okay, that leads to my last beef about the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Which, How did Morgan not know this? Yeah, I, and, and even bigger than that, the whole Dubai thing, um, like first, and we mentioned this on the last p podcast, um, how could Chuck have gone all the way to Paris and back without his roommate knowing, mm -hmm. um, and now he, he's going all the way to Dubai and back. I mean, Dubai is pretty far <laughs> if you yeah. look it up on the map. I mean, that's the Arab Emirates. I mean, that's that's far. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so the time it would have taken to go all the way there in the middle of the day there. Mm -hmm. And so obviously it would have taken taken place over a couple of days. Right. And his roommate doesn't know where he is. And there doesn't appear to have been any time passed at the buy more. Um, it was it was kind of a I mean, it was and don't don't get me wrong. It was fun to be in Dubai, but I felt like it was a it was a pretty big plot hole. We yeah. need a little more sense of time passing. Yeah. And I think we're maybe about to, I think we're going to start getting that now that Morgan and Ellie, let's not forget Ellie, mm -hmm. are getting suspicious. Yeah. Uh, we're, I think we're going to start to see more of the fallout mm -hmm. from the really, I mean, let's face it, he's got some sloppy cover stories going on. Yeah. But he's been able to get away with it for two and a half years. Yeah. Well, at least, the, and the thing that I was surprised about is they could have given lip service to it. I mean, they, they could have mm -hmm. covered it with a line. And you know, maybe they did and it got cut for time. Yeah, that's true. That's when true. When the season three DVD comes out, we may, like with season two, the, the deleted scenes, there may be a few, ah, uh, moments mm -hmm. that explain some of this, which again, I mean, that's, yeah. they didn't air, therefore it kind of doesn't count. But yeah, yeah, that was, those were some pretty major plot holes. Yeah. But I am glad that Morgan is finally getting suspicious. And mm -hmm. not only that, but he loosed Jeff and Lester on him. Yeah, so we've got Jeff, Lester, Morgan, and Ellie all mm -hmm. watching them. I mean, who, so who's poor not Devin. watching them? <laughs> I mean, I mean, just, poor Devin. Yeah. He was about to have a meltdown already. Oh, I know. Did you catch that parallel when Ellie said, you've just been laying around on the couch watching TV? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got that. Just like Chuck was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, I do have to say the laser pen. Was, was hilarious. I mean, the whole, uh, I mean, that part of the Dubai <laughs> sequence was, um, was great. Yeah. You could, you could cut the wings off the fly with it if you're feeling really <laughs> sadistic, which I am. And especially because we, we know that, that he shot his toe once. Yes. So he's already lost one appendage to, to Chuck. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah. Be very careful. And yeah. Yep. I was when we were tweeting through the episode that I was saying, you know, all all the Chuck Casey shippers, this one's for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's some out there somewhere, but yeah, I love that they throw those in there every now and then. It just, yeah, it's so uncomfortable for poor poor Casey. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, men can hug, not if they have their man parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not if they don't have their man parts. That's what it was. Mm. <laughs> so so all all in all, I mean, I don't want people to think with these sort of negative comments that that it wasn't uh a strong episode i mean i th i think it was a good episode it was well received uh, i watched the forums today today and and people did enjoy the episode i enjoyed the episode and it, and it really advanced some significant things in the plot it um did. and so i i would say 
Uh, next week is going to be great. I think we're finally going to see the Hannah character come to life. Yeah. And uh, and I think that's her last episode. So some places have said she's in three. Some have said she's in four. I have not been able to get a solid answer on that. I was under the impression the intel I had was that 307 was her last, but I could see it going to 308. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll see. Find out. Yeah. So I guess that's the end of our discussion. Yeah. I guess that wraps up our chat about Chuck versus the Nacho Sampler, which, mm-hmm. by the way, the, the titular character there did look pretty tasty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it did. It did. And I liked how they used the plate there with, you know, Chuck used that to help save the day. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. But we want to thank our sponsors, mm-hmm. uh, mo- moviemorons.com. Uh, it's a podcast about movies. And syrianjunkies.de, the largest fan site for television in Germany. Be sure to visit both of those fine websites and check out everything they've got to offer. Again, that's syrianjunkies.de and moviemorons.com. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to wrap things up here. I um, want to remind everybody, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that we are now on blip.tv. And I encourage you to check it out. Check out how uh, that changes things. And actually, all of the new podcasts that are on the chuckpodcast.com site will now be feeding off of Blip TV. So, uh, And also, Chuck TV will have the podcast on, on Chuck TV as well. So uh, there will be lots of great places you can look for the podcast. And remember to click on those ads. Because it's a great, cheap way to support us. That's right. And if you like our new format, we encourage you to go over to podcastalley.com and look for Chuck versus the podcast there. You can vote for us and make us your favorite television podcast. Um, it's a new month. That means your votes count again. So head on over there, podcastalley.com. Mm-hmm. And as always, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to share with us. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at mail at chuckpodcast.com. And next week, we are so excited to bring you a video interview with Sarah Lancaster, who plays Ellie Bartowski on the show. Other than that, that's all we've got except for spoilers. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, you can turn the podcast safely off now. See you next time. See ya. Bye. And we're back. Uh, Mel, you've got some exciting stuff for us. We had a really exciting day um, a couple weeks ago on a Friday. Zach figured out how to live stream from his phone. So he took us on set. They were filming episode 314, which is why this is in the spoilers section. And uh, he shot just a few videos. You can find him at Ustream. Look for Zachary Levi. I think he's also been posting some links on his Twitter, which is Zachary Levi as well um but it was really cool to see that he did a few in the afternoon and then later that night um you could see yvonne in the the train car they were shooting in the in the train car if you remember from the the casting call for 314 we know that they're in the traveling in a passenger train in europe somewhere Mm -hmm. and and that's what they were filming so you can see yvonne in one scene in one of his little live streams she's there with her blackberry just you know typing away and asks him what he's doing and he tells her and she's she's surprised that that he's live streaming and then she's you know waving and everything and uh, in another segment they're at lunch so you get to see what they eat on the set and Yvonne shows off her dog uh, Chazzy and then poor Willie who's too heavy to pick up mm-hmm. <laughs> and then later that night he uh, Zach streamed again from the set and, um, oh, there's another, there was a video of um, Adam Baldwin um, there in, in the afternoon, but for some reason it didn't save to the site. It was just basically him saying, hey. Uh, but then later that night, it was Zach and, and a lot of the crew members and the tacos that they were eating and him getting his picture taken with the lady serving the tacos. And it was just fun. It was just cool mm-hmm. to be able to, you know, to see what's going on there. So yeah, another reason to go on Twitter. Indeed, yes. up to the minute. Mm-hmm. Breaking news. <laughs> so that was that was really fun, and many thanks to Zach for doing that. That mm-hmm. was just a real treat. Uh, a lot of fans had a good time doing that, watching that. So, um, let's talk a little bit about episode three fifteen now, wow. which I believe they're they're now um, about to wrap. Uh, it was announced last week that Fred Willard and Susie Kurtz have been cast as Mister and Mrs. Turner. Uh, they're that spy couple we talked about in our last podcast in the cool. casting call. 
Yeah, this is for Chuck versus the role models. Um, mm -hmm. They're a pair of spies who've been together for 30 years. And, uh, you know, the casting of Fred Willard and Susie Kurtz tells me this is going to be a more comedic role. Uh, <laughs> right. Than, yeah. than what some people were thinking. So I'm really looking forward to that. I think I think that's going to be a hoot. I, yeah. Yeah. And she she was a hoot on uh, Pushing Daisies. She was. Yeah. Yeah. We saw her at Comic-Con a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and she was having a lot of fun um, standing up in the Warner Brothers booth and, and talking about, you know, oh, we could see her talking to one of the, her other cast members and saying, oh, my gosh, I can't believe all these people are here to see us. And, yeah, yeah she's she's fun. Yeah. Cool. Well, we also have a casting call for episode 316. That's happy and sad, man, I, when I think that they're getting so close to the end of the season <laughs> and shooting it. <laughs> well, yeah. We have a lot to watch. Uh, yes. But uh, the casting call is for Chuck versus the Tooth. And first we have Dr. Leo Dreyfus, who is somewhere between 45 and 60, Caucasian, brutally deadpan, inscrutable and dour. He's a top CIA psychiatrist who provides therapy for spies and ex-spies. Hmm. And this is a guest star. Um then we also have Dr. Martin Kowambi from 40 to 45, African-American, Africa's most respected scientist. He accompanies President Kuti to the symphony. He's hiding a sinister secret or 10. Um, then we have Merlin, 30-ish. Uh, this could be any ethnicity with a twitch. This ex-spy is a mm -hmm. mental patient who expresses curiosity about the facility's newest patient. Interesting. So, mm. who could that newest patient be, and why would he be in the facility? Um, then we have President Jakaya Kuti from 50 to 60, the president of Zamibia. This esteemed African man with an entourage is traveling to Los Angeles for diplomatic meetings and a trip to the symphony. And this is just a one day guest star. Um, so, psychiatrist to the spies, a new patient at the spy mental hospital african dignitaries going to the symphony uh one of these doesn't look like the other <laughs> <laughs> um two of these smell like papa bartowski returning hmm that was my first thought when i when they said the the casting call for merlin and he's curious about the facility's newest mental patient my mm -hmm. first thought was ah this is how we get uh orion back in the game but really, there's so many possibilities. I mean, this could be Chuck undercover. Yeah. Could be Casey undercover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But hey. Or maybe one of them actually breaks. <laughs> could be. Now, actually, what would happen if? I mean, that could that could be an easy storyline if um if the intersect started to overload. Ooh. Yeah. What would happen? Mm hmm. Like if his abilities start actually going on the fritz. That. That could be pretty juicy. Mm -hmm. A virus. Oh, a Ooh. virus. Wow. Good one, Liz. Very good Sometimes one. Sometimes I have them. <laughs> I'm, not just, I'm not just a pretty face. Yeah. That would be cool, though. Yeah. That would be really Yeah, that would, that would end somebody up in the facility. The loony bin. Mm -hmm. Especially if it, hap <laughs> if it happens at the end of 315 and then carries over to 316. Mm -hmm. That could be really good. Yep. Hmm, interesting. I'm tr also curious why the casting call keeps mentioning the uh, the Africans going to the symphony. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, I don't know. Maybe there's some artifact that's activated by a certain song. Yeah. And they're gonna assassinate the president of Zambia. Yeah. That way, maybe, I don't know. Maybe use a mental patient to do it. I don't know. I can't quite see those two storylines converging. Unless it's a strange brew storyline. Anybody seen that movie? Uh -uh. Um, mm -hmm. In that movie, it's uh, featuring Canadians, Bob and Doug McKenzie. Um, they get mental patients to perform crimes. Now, that's interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Food for thought. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. So, Liz, you've got one for us? I do, yes. Matt Mitovich from FanCast has a tiny bit of news for us as well. Thanks for the interview with Chuck's Kristen Kruk. Say that one three times fast. <laughs> Well, things get cat between her and Sarah. That's, that question comes from Greg. And Matt says, well, let's keep any dreams of playful pillow fights in check, uh, <laughs> please. Uh, 
I'm hearing that the two beauties in Chuck's life won't share any scenes before Hannah bids her bids us adieu in a couple of weeks. So, mm. sorry, Greg. Interesting. Now that that I guess would be consistent with that storyline that we saw in the preview. Um, it didn't seem like Yvonne was anywhere in sight. Well, you know, based on last night's episode, it doesn't appear to me that Chuck is uh, very much interested in in um, romance right now. <laughs> yeah, I and think I, he's got his plate full. I think the preview for three hundred seven makes that pretty clear as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, which we would like to remind people that way back when that kiss spoiler came out, we suggested that it be taken with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. So that yes, and they it, do kiss, but perhaps it's not what everybody's thinking. Yeah, and what, if I remember back, that was there was a steamy scene in the theater room Mm -hmm. that's what they're referencing and that's what we saw in the promo yeah so Mm -hmm. we'll see tune in to chuck sunday in canada and monday in the states you lucky ducks (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah and so i guess that's all we've got that wraps it that's it so we'll see you next time have a good one and be sure to join us for our interview with sarah lancaster till next time bye-bye see ya